Packed inside the skull, the brain is delicate and vulnerable, and injuries can be not just difficult to diagnose, but also very hard to treat. It's a huge challenge just trying to understand which areas have been damaged and how badly. <laughs> the surgeons in France admit there's a lot they don't know about Schumacher's condition, so they're keeping him in a coma. The signs weren't promising when he was first brought in. This is an important point. He was overwhelmed, agitated. He was not responding to questions. He showed spontaneous movements of his four limbs, but he was not in a normal state. Injuries to the brain are among the most worrying because they're so unpredictable. The brain itself is like a soft jelly held inside the hard box of the skull, so any sudden movement can be dangerous. Michael Schumacher was hit on the right side of his head. Surgeons say this caused internal bleeding within the brain, what's called hematoma. There are also contusions or bruising of the delicate tissue, adding to pressure inside the skull, which can cause further damage. So the first step was an operation to relieve that pressure. Beyond that, no one can be sure how things will go. Patients who have been victims of uh, major trauma and sustained severe head injuries um, can take weeks to months, sometimes years, of neurorehabilitation to try and regain function and to regain some normal life. It's almost impossible to say. Nearly five years ago, at this ski resort in Canada, the actress Natasha Richardson hit her head and initially said she was fine. But after an hour, she felt unwell, and three days later, she died. The damage to her brain was worse than thought. With the ski season now at its height, this latest accident will reinforce the campaign for skiers to wear safety helmets. Michael Schumacher was wearing a helmet, and the surgeons say that without it, he'd be dead already. David Truckman, BBC News.